In this video, we're going to find bifurcation values for a one-parameter family of autonomous differential equations. And we're going to draw phase lines before, at, and after each bifurcation value. So suppose we have a one-parameter family given by this formula. So what we want to do is find the bifurcation values, which are the values of A for which the number or type of equilibrium points of this differential equation changes suddenly. So there's always several approaches to doing this. Some are algebraic and some are graphical. And in this case, we're going to see pretty quickly that we're going to have to resort to graphical approaches. So one approach is to algebraically determine what the equilibrium points of this guy are for arbitrary values of A. So if I just fix A to be a single value and I look for equilibrium points, I'd be solving this guy. And since this has an e to the y and an a y in it, um, basically we're not going to be able to solve this in any easy way. So this algebraic approach of looking for the equilibrium points for arbitrary a is something we can't really do here. So what we're going to try and do is graph this guy, graph f a of y for different values of a. So what we notice here is that this is a difference of two functions, e to the y and a y plus 1, that by themselves we could graph easily. So I'm actually going to graph these separately on the same axis. So if we have y on this axis and we graph the function e to the y, and then I'm also going to graph a y plus 1. Now, I'd have to pick a value of a to do this. So let's just assume a is some positive number. So we have a line with y-intercept 1 and some positive slope. So it might look like this. And this would be a graph of a, y plus 1 for some value of a. So what we notice about this is that uh, these two graphs would intersect at two points. They intersect at the point 0, 1 because e to the 0 equals 1, and this line has y-intercept 1. And if the, the line has positive slope, if we chose a positive a, or it, rather a positive enough a, then we might intersect somewhere like here. So for, for the slope that I chose, it looks like we have two intersections of these guys. Well, wh what does it mean that these guys intersect? Well, since this is a difference of these guys, I can, I can use this information to actually graph f a of y now. So if I have y, and I'm actually going to graph f a of y for the value of a we chose here. So this is a difference of two functions. So e to the y minus a y plus 1 is positive when we're to the right of this point, because e y is greater than a to the y plus 1. So I'm, I'm going to draw those two intersection points on the axis. And I know that f a of y is positive when we're to the right of this point, because e to the y is greater than a y plus 1. So I know that we must be positive to the right of this point. So this isn't going to be completely accurate, but this, this shows how you can graph f a of y if it's a difference of two functions like this. In between these two points, we see that a y plus 1 is greater than e to the y. So in fact, this difference has to be negative. So between here and here, we're negative. And over here to the left of y equals 0, we have e to the y is greater than a y plus 1. So this is positive again. So while this graph isn't extremely accurate, um, it does get the important information right, where you're above and below the y-axis. So for some choice of a, which it's not really clear yet what that choice was, um, we have a graph of f a of y. So we, at this point, for this value of a, we could graph a phase line for this. But by now, 
we might be thinking, OK, now I see what happens in general for different A. So what A represents is the slope of this line. So if we look at the slope of this line, as we change that slope, you might imagine this intersection point getting closer and closer until A is the correct slope of the tangent line at this point. And then it keeps going, and then you have uh, different lines with an equilibrium point coming off over there. So what you should be imagining is this line changing slope and where these intersection points might be as you change the slope. So because of this, this piques our interest in, well, what happens when A is the correct slope of the tangent line at that point? So we're going to look for A, the slope of the tangent line. OK? Well, if you look at the derivative of e to the y, that's e to the y. And if we evaluate that at y equals 0, that's 1. So that means when a equals 1, the slope of this line will be 1. So we suspect that a equals 1 is a bifurcation value. So that means we're going to consider three different cases where a is less than 1, a is equal to 1, and a is greater than 1. So this, represents, this actually represents the a is greater than 1 case, because the slope of this line is clearly greater than the slope of the tangent line. So now we can also draw the tangent line, which would represent a y plus 1 when a is equal to 1. And we can also draw another line, which would represent a y plus 1 when a is less than 1. So you can see all I did was decrease the slope of that line. And in this case, when a is less than 1, we can see there'd be an intersection point over here. So we can use this information to graph f a of y in the other two cases. So this case right here is seen to be the a is greater than 1 case. And then we can also graph f a of y in the a equals 1 case. Well, what happens in the a equals 1 case? Well, except at this point y equals 0, e to the y is always greater than a y plus 1, because this is the tangent line, you can see. So except at that point 0, f a of y is always positive. So the graph looks something like this. And then we can draw the a is less than 1 case. So we look at the difference between e to the y and this line. Well, in this case, we have two intersection points. So to the right of y equals 0, e to the y is always greater than a y plus 1. So that means f a of y is positive. Between these two intersection points, we can see that a y plus 1 is greater than e to the y. So we must be negative. So I'll draw the second intersection point, and it must be negative. And then to the left, we have that e to the y is greater than a y plus 1 again. So we're going to look something like this. So we have all the, the important information encoded in these three diagrams, and we can proceed to draw the phase lines. So we have all the pertinent, in, pertinent information needed to draw the phase lines. So when we have three cases, a less than 1, a equals 1, and a greater than 1, well, in all these cases, there's an equilibrium point at y equals 0. In the a less than 1 case, there's another equilibrium point below that. This is the only equilibrium point in this case. And in the a greater than 1 case, we have another equilibrium point over here. 
OK, so let's start talking about directions. Um, in the A less than 1 case, we have uh, solutions are increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, because we are above, below, above the y-axis. So we have increasing, decreasing, increasing. Here, if you're not at the equilibrium point, solutions are always increasing, because you're always above the axis. And here, we have increasing, decreasing, increasing. So this is an example of a transcritical bifurcation, because we have an equilibrium point that passes through another equilibrium point. So another thing to say about this is that we can't actually determine the, the, the values of these equilibrium points in terms of A, because we couldn't solve for the location of the equilibrium point algebraically. But the, the point of this exercise is to see that you can still use this graphical method in order to figure out what your bifurcations look like. 